<laughs> just <laughs> me out of the way. Good morning, everybody. It's Pastor Jeff Jacobs, AKA The Walking Preacher on this fine Wednesday morning on another one of my prayer walks. This morning, as you can see, I am beginning my prayer walk today in the wonderful community of Christina here in South Lake. I'm gonna be walking through this huge neighborhood in this part of town and, and doing some serious praying today, friends. And that reminds me of one of our uh, 10 benefits of going to church, the one that we're gonna be talking about this Sunday is the benefit of being able to find brothers and sisters to pray with, to, to be able to learn how to pray correctly. And that's what we're going to be talking about this Sunday from Nehemiah chapter 1. We're going to be talking about how Nehemiah prayed and fasted before God. He lamented the situation of himself and his people before God and how that kind of prayer really moved God on behalf of Nehemiah and his people. Prayer isn't ultimately, prayer puts us uh, squarely in the will of the Lord and puts us in agreement with God. So learning to pray well on a daily basis, to pray biblically, is of the utmost importance for, for us to grow as human beings. And I want to encourage you all to, to send us prayer requests to our website at shepherdroad.com, friends, and we will begin that prayer journey with you, praying together um, according to the Word of God, putting us in intimate relationship with God. Um, hope to see you, so, you guys sometime soon. Christina. I'll be praying for you today. If there's anybody in the neighborhood, Christina, that wants me to come by and pray, send us a prayer request and let us know. We'll see you soon. God bless. Jeff Jacobs, the walking preacher. I'll just keep walking with my Lord. Hey friends, it's Pastor Jeff Jacobs from Shepherd Road Presbyterian Church in Lakeland, Florida. Hope you're doing well. Thank you so much uh, for checking out our website that we've designed exactly for you. If you're a visitor to, to the website for the first time today, if you're new uh, to our church, um, if you're someone who lives in the community, if you're someone anywhere in the world, we welcome all of you. It's good to have you today. You know, friends, we, we designed this website particularly, specifically to answer many of the questions that many of you may have. Maybe some of the questions that motivated you, the impetus behind you coming to the website in the first place. You know, the questions of why are we here? You know, are there bigger purposes behind all the difficulties going on in the world today? Is there an answer? Is, is God real? Did Jesus really die on the cross? And we've designed the website for people just like you who are asking those questions. Maybe you're looking for hope in a difficult time. Maybe you are looking for your purpose in life. Well, friends, in Jesus, all these questions are answered. And we, so we're so glad that you've come to the website. And we've designed the website specifically for people like you. As I'm looking over the website here right now, we have an answers page to answer many of the questions that we, that we find answered in Scripture to the, that, that the world doesn't seem to be able to answer right now. If you're going through a crisis, if you're looking for friendship, we have pages 
for you, friends, if you're looking for a purpose. And again, as we said before, if you're looking for hope, I, I'm a big fan particularly of the answers page and the Bible page. It, it demonstrates to us what the Bible is, what it teaches us, and why it is God's word, and how it is that we can find ultimate hope in him and find truth in the word of God. So continue to visit on our page. Thank you so much for being here. We'd love to have a discussion with you. So click on the tab below, send me a prayer request. Maybe we can uh, can begin a discussion. I'd love to invest some time in some of my time with you and, and, and maybe we can become friends. Check out our, our vlogs. Join us on Sunday morning uh, with one of our worship videos on your tablet or your phone. And perhaps one day you can come visit us here at the church as well. God bless you, brothers and sisters. Have a wonderful day. Thanks to the Lord for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Good morning to everybody with us this morning. Good morning to everyone watching online as well. It is good to see everybody today. I hope that you've had a great week this week. We've got a lot going on at the church. Again, uh, uh, when, when y'all see Zachary and Leanne, give them big high fives. They were here this morning just after just returning from their honeymoon. So they were here just after their honeymoon to give them big high fives on that um a lot of things going on at the church I want you to pass the pads if you're in the center part of the aisle right in the center part of the aisle fill out the pads especially if you are visiting and we don't have your contact info i promise you i would not abuse that uh, we'd love to be able to contact you and pray with you and things like that so please grab a hold of those skipping down the announcements a little bit I want to focus on the youth back to school bash. That'll be next Sunday between 5 and 8 p.m. here in the fellowship hall. There's going to be food, fellowship, fun. There's going to be black light dodgeball. I am so stinking excited about black light dodgeball. It is for people ages 7 to 77. If you enjoy having fun and you don't mind getting hit in the face with a dodgeball, this is the time and place for you. So that's going to be a whole lot of fun. Black light dodgeball, ultimate frisbee, flag football. So back to school fun. It's going to be, we invited the local churches in the area to come. There's going to be a whole lot of people here. We need you. So please raise your hand right now if you'll come be a volunteer to kind of be a chaperone. Raise your hand right now. If you'll think about it. I need to see more hands than that. Raise your hand if you're going to, we need chaperones. So think, so think about it if you have, don't have your hand up. Think about showing up and helping us be uh just kind of like chaperones and helping. We're going to have a lot of kids here from a lot of churches. So that'll be next Sunday between 5 and 8. Looking forward to that. Uh, notice in the vest, we will sign up options for potential opportunities to engage and serve at SRPC at, at our church here at Shepherd Road. we got a lot of ministries. We're currently developing our spiritual gifts. Counselors have started their training, and they're going to start counseling people very soon. So if you've taken the spiritual gifts classes, we'll be in contact with you. We're currently trying to organize it with the um, ministry leaders, making sure everybody's on the same page. Um, but that's going to be happening soon. So what we're going to try to do is, is to connect you with the spiritual gifts that you have with the, with the possible uh, ministries we have around the church. Um, so please sign up in the back. That'll be happening a lot soon. We're also going to start small groups. Pablo and Diane, we have rehired them to be our small group coordinator. So if you'd like to be part of a small group, brothers and sisters, let us know. I think there's a sign-up sheet in the back. And just, you can dream on this. It doesn't have to be uh, any kind of small group in particular. It's going to be Bible-based. It's going to be servant-based. 
A lot of them will be sort of social groups with couples. Some of them will be activities-based. doesn't matter. If you don't know what kind of small group you want to be in, sign up and say, I don't know what kind of small group I'm going to be in, and we'll put you in one. Probably like the clean up after dinner group. That's what we'll probably put you in on that one. That was a joke. It's a joke. We'll put you in a really cool group. Uh, it be a lot of fun, but small groups are coming back. Spiritual gifts classes, small groups, website monitors. If you're willing to, to help monitor our website, typos, or help us with our Facebook page and all that we do there, please let us know. Uh, keep Wednesday evenings open. Very excited. September the 8th, we're going to have our Wednesday night dinner. That night will just be the dinner, uh, just dinner and just talking about things. We're also going to have other little small groups and studies after that. But we're going to start our Wednesday night groups again. Um, I'm assuming there's going to be sign-up sheets Maybe talk to Phyllis Keeler. Sign up sheets, right? For cooking, is that right, Phyllis? Oh, it's on there. Okay, very good. On the other page. So we're going to, like we did pre-COVID, people sign up to cook meals. You'll be responsible for all those meals. It's going to be awesome. We actually ate really well before. I look forward to eating on Wednesday nights because the food was amazing. And pretty much you had to do better than the person last week. That's kind of the goal for everybody. That's kind of a little competition. And then after that first week, we'll have little, little uh, Bible studies in small groups as well so please don't forget to, to sign up for that the youth uh the kids pack school supplies needed you see that food pantry continues to do really well and again friends it's so stinking exciting for us to see people that we've served at the food pantry and they're in a difficult time have now become blessed they come to the lord and now they are serving with us in the food pantry our little kids this summer have have sort of run the food pantry the last few weeks some of our small kids it's been really really exciting to see so if you want to be a part of that, let us know. I think that's about all we got here. Oh, kids choir. Uh, we, we're not going to have the kids choir today. We do have a few, f two or three families who either have COVID or have been exposed to COVID and can't be here. So a lot of our kids weren't going to be able to be here this morning. So we're going to postpone the, ch the kids choir until September, the first Sunday of September, I think. I think that's what it is. So that's what we're going to be doing. Who's excited? Who's ready to go? So good to see everybody today. All right. God is doing good things. Good to see a couple of faces that I haven't seen in a while. Wonderful to see you guys. Good to have our family and friends in the house today. And let's certainly be in prayer for each other. This morning, we're going to be starting our call to worship from my favorite place. In all of Scripture, Revelation chapter 19, verse 8, this is happening as we speak up in heaven above. Then I heard what sounded like a great multitude, like the roar of rushing waters, like loud peals of thunder, shouting, Hallelujah! Hallelujah! For the Lord God Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and be glad and give him the glory. We will do the same this morning. Let's pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank and we praise you this morning for the privilege of knowing you, of being in your house with your people, our Father, today. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us this morning that we would worship you in spirit and in truth, worshiping you with all of our hearts and minds and strength. Be pleased with the goings on here this morning, our Lord. We ask it all in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. What a beautiful day to worship the Lord this morning. Let's stand together and worship his name. All right, sing with us. With this heart open wide from the depths, from the heights, I will bring a sacrifice. With these hands lifted high, hear my song, hear my cry, I will bring a sacrifice. I will bring a sacrifice. Here we go. Take a slide 
I'm so glad to have Mark and Rodrigo back there. <clears throat> Make sure my mic is on and off when it should be. Thank you guys for, for doing that. <laughs> don't need two microphones for me. No, I don't need that. Uh, we're praying. We're not preaching yet. What am I doing? Goodness gracious, we're praying. So, <clears throat> telling folks in the first service, I was going to pray for COVID today. I don't like this COVID spike, and uh, it's just in the way, so we're going to pray it away. And we're going to learn today how to do that. For those of you who don't know, we're going to talk a lot about prayer today, in-depth prayer, all that kind of stuff. We're going to pray. We're going to learn today how to pray away, how to, how to engage God properly in order to move the creator of everything, the Almighty, in, in a positive direction towards us. We're going to pray about that today. Uh, we're still going to pray for, for folks, the teachers and kids going back to school. Appreciate them, all the teachers and those in administration. Um, and want to pray for them today. I um, we'll also want to focus on today on getting to know Jesus, sharing Jesus, how to share Jesus well. I'm going to be talking a lot about that, friends. And, I, and I'm, I'm asking you to, to pray for me. I, I need to get back to my proper week preparation for preaching. I'm not preaching well, and I, I need to get back to doing that. So, And God can use pre sermons. It doesn't matter whether I think they're good or not. So don't misunderstand me. It's not about me. But I need to get back to that, that rhythm that I've had before. So be, be in prayer for that. And also, wanna, we're going to be uh, developing some videos. By the way, if you have not seen the video content we have on our website and on Facebook, please check those out all the time. Please, we've got a lot of great content. The Walking Preacher or something. Anybody seen, anybody seen The Walking Preacher yet? Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, Toph got jokes, man. Yeah, so Toph has seen it for sure. So most of you have seen Walking Preacher. Go to, go to our website, or on our website, or on Facebook. It's on Facebook for sure, on website too. And watch the Walking Preacher videos and pray for us. That's my, our, our efforts in getting in the community. We've got all kinds of ideas that we're excited about and just getting to know our community for Christ. Um, just pray God gives us boldness and wisdom and love and all those kind of things and, and effectiveness in, in that effort. Um, and if anybody, I've, I've been praying quite a bit. There's two or three people, and I don't know the names. I don't see the faces when I pray. So I don't know who it is, but two or, three, two or three of you that aren't quite sure yet about all this Jesus business. So if that's you, I want you to feel free to contact me. Not that I've got it all figured out, but I've studied this quite a bit. I've looked, I went through my agnostic phase way back when, you know, smarter than the world and all that. No, no. No shame in that. We all go through the, or a lot of us go through that phase of we're thinking people, right? It just kind of seems cool and everything, whatever. And I've, because of reason, because of truth, I've come back to the Lord years. I did that a long time ago. That didn't just happen yesterday, by the way. Um, so if you have any questions about that, let's talk. And, and a lot of the bumper stick, you know, things like, you know, why, why, does, why does evil exist if God is good? Why do bad things happen to good people? And all those legitimate questions they're really easily answered in god's word they're, they really aren't a problem we just have to sit down and reason them out together so if if that is you um then please 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 let me know and we will we will get together and i'd love to talk or if you have any neighbors or family members and friends i really want to focus on the community the difficulties the questions and and completely christianizing this community whether people have come to christ or not just that they they've heard they, they are aware of the truth of christ we really want to do that in the next three to five years. And the walking preaching, among other things, are going to hopefully uh, be a part of that. We, uh, our 10 benefits of going to church, again, this isn't for you. You're here. This is for you to share with others and encouraging them to come. Today, we're going to be talking about prayer. prayer. Coming to church really teaches us how to pray and pray together and pray powerfully and effectively. So, um, so let's do that. Let's pray about those things today. And if you ever have any prayer requests, please don't hesitate to go to the website. Hit the prayer request button. Send me a text if you'd rather do that, and we'll pray for those things. Let's pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, I see the table before us this morning, Lord, and we are reminded of the immensely wonderful, the immensely impossible death, the suffering, the body broken, the bloodshed of your son Jesus on our behalf. Lord, I pray that we all pause for a moment. We all consider what it is we're about to do the profundity, the privilege of coming to the table of Jesus, the table that he has set for us very purposefully and specifically and very lovingly that perpetually in history, we would be able to come and dine with our very savior. Where we would sense his nearness in a special way and be fed by him. Obviously, Lord, the, the bread does not physically become Jesus' body. The juice does not physically become his blood. 
but spiritually speaking, we feed upon him nonetheless in faith. And there are many, many benefits in doing so. Lord, I thank you for everybody who is here this morning. I thank you for those who are watching us live stream or perhaps those who are watching a recording later. I pray that your presence is what we sense, that what we take away today above all things is that we are in the presence of our Savior. Jesus be among us. Our Father, pour out your Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Christ among us this morning. Be pleased with the goings on here. Cause our hearts and our minds, our very souls to soar in the eternal reality in which we are confronted. The almighty, powerful God, the all-loving God in which we are confronted this morning. Help us to to once again see our souls, our, our very hearts and our minds swell by your presence, by the reality that there is something bigger and better and more powerful and, and, and almighty and, and good that is beyond that which we see on the TVs and on our computers. And ultimately, ultimately Lord, it's all working out according to your plan. Father, when we're done with the 10 benefits, I look forward to getting into a study of the end times of what the Bible teaches about the coming end, about what, what the last days, whatever, whenever and whatever those are, are going to look like according to your word. And I pray that indeed our, our sore hearts and minds would soar then as well. Father, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke coronavirus. I rebuke, Father, the, uh, and I, we ask that, every, that everything that is true Today, whether anything that's true about the virus and untrue be, be, be shown to us. In the meantime, Father, we have some folks here who, who have COVID and we pray for a quick healing upon them. We have some folks who are being tested. I pray they are negative. And I pray that you would keep us all safe and well and that you would remove this spike, our gracious Heavenly Father. And even more so, Father, I pray that you would remove the, the wall that is, that is between uh, so many people in the world and the wall that is between us and you, our Father. The wall that was knocked down by the blood of Jesus when he breathed his last on the cross, Father, that we would once again learn to look up and, and to obtain our primary information from our Heavenly Father through your word, through prayer, through worship, and how you speak to us, our Father that we would be a hopeful people. Again, Jesus is hope personified, that we would share that truth with everybody, that he is our hope, and not a hope so hope, but an abiding truth, an abiding stability of goodness and mercy and love that will never go away. I pray, Father, for your spirit to be among us in our schools as we start back today. For those who are driving the bus, those who are cooking the lunches, for teachers and administrators and children and parents and all of that that goes into, into those things. For the librarians, Father, everybody, the janitors, everybody, the coaches, that it would be a wonderful school year, a well school year, a school year where people come to Christ, Father, where you move. I pray that you'd be in our homes, in our marriages, in our health, Father, that you'd bless us with everything that we need, our Father, and especially what we especially need is your presence, your closeness. We need a revival, an individual and corporate revival. Again, Father, yes, in the next three to five years, we'd like to see this Shepherd Road Corridor Christianized in the, over the coming years after that for everybody to come to Christ. We know that is your heart too. We are excited, Father, about you on our good days and bad days about you. I pray, Father, for everything going on this week, for the small groups, the spiritual gifts, the, the ministries we're starting, the youth coming our, our next Sunday evening, the, all the folks coming from around, the churches around here coming to our youth event. Bless those things. Continue to keep us safe at the food pantry and bless what we do. Oh, so many things, Father. And bless what we do together this morning, coming to your table. Glory to you, our Father. We ask it all in Jesus' precious and wonderful name we pray. Amen. You know, a quick uh, note to self is don't go to a raised baseball game the night before you have to sing at church. That's a, that's a tough thing to do. Um, there's a really cool story in um, 2 Samuel. And the most stressful thing about this service today was not that I had to get up here and sing or speak or anything like that. It was actually trying to pronounce the name of the person this story's about, <laughs> Mephibosheth. Yeah. 
And um, it's an amazing story uh, about, if, if you guys remember, uh, David defeats Goliath. And da David becomes really, really popular around Israel. In fact, later on, everybody wants David to be the king instead of Saul. Saul's kind of going downhill, and uh, you know the whole story. Saul's hunting down David, trying to kill David. Uh, but David and Jonathan, Saul's son, remain friends during this whole time. And Don Jonathan often actually protects David. Um, later on, after David's been king for a while, when that was going on, when, actually when, when word came back to, to uh, Israel, Jerusalem, uh, that King Saul and Jonathan had both been killed in battle, uh, the nurse of King Saul knew that the people wanted a different king. They wanted King David and that the lives of Saul's family was in danger. So he took uh, Mephibosheth. Yeah. <laughs> And she, she ran away to save his life. And uh, at this time, he was just a young kid. And uh, as they were escaping the city, uh, he, he fell and, uh, and apparently damaged his, his legs in a way to where he became lame the rest of his life. Well, later on, David had been king for a little while. And of course, the blessings of God were all over Israel. And the Sheba, Sheba Beth, Beth Shezre, came back to came back to Israel and he lived a simple life he lived a life that uh, there wasn't much to it um, and then one day and you'll pick this up in second Samuel um, King David called a former servant of uh, of Saul in and asked if there was any family members left that were still living and uh, the servant said uh, I believe his name is Ziba something like that but he said, yes, there is. Uh, one of Jonathan's sons is, uh, is alive, and he's living here, and he's, he's lame in both legs. David said, bring him to me. Now, can, can you imagine this young man was in line to be the king of Israel? He could have been. The people chose to go a different way. He had to flee for his life so he wouldn't be killed, so the throne wouldn't be in danger. And um, he comes back, he's trying to leave this, live this life just so nobody knows who he is or anything like that. And then the king's men come to your house one day and say, the king wants to see you. That'd be a scary thought. You're like, oh, they found me. I've got to go before the king. Surely they're taking me out. And so he comes and he sits before King David, thinking the worst. And King David says, because of your father, Jonathan, I'm going to restore to you all the lands that Saul had. And from this day forward, you will eat at my table every night. But I'm sorry, as I... <laughs> we are so unworthy of what God has for us. And just the same way that this young man thought he was in trouble, thought things were gonna go really bad, the king flipped it on him and did amazing things. And our Lord does that for us every day. We come to him broken. We come to him lame. We come to him with all the troubles of this world. And when he calls his name, we come to him in fear. We're terrified that he's going to judge us. And rightfully so, he should judge us. But he doesn't. He forgives our sins. He restores us. He gives us back everything that we could ever want. And he calls us to his table, to eat at his table. What an awesome vision that is of our God. And so the song I wanted to share with you today is called Carried to the Table. We are all broken. We are all wounded. We're all lame. And Jesus takes us and holds us in his arms and carries us to his table where we'll eat with him for eternity. So I pray that this song is a blessing to you this morning. I was shattered by the fall, broken and forgotten, feeling lost and all alone, summoned by the king and to the master's courts, 
lifted by the Savior and cradled in his arms. I was carried to the table, seated where I don't belong, carried to the table. Swept away by his love And I don't see my brokenness anymore Amen When I'm seated at the table of the Lord I'm carried to the table The table of the Lord Fighting thoughts of fear Wondering why he called my name Am I good enough to share this cup This world has left me lame But even in my weakness The Savior called my name and in his holy presence, I am healed and unashamed. I'm carried to the table, seated where I don't belong. Carried to the table. Swept away by his love And I don't see my brokenness anymore When I'm seated at the table of the Lord I'm carried to the table The table of job both of you fellas thank you so very much it's nice that God gives us so many gifts around here <clears throat> we are as I said before we're, we are continuing our, t our benefits of coming to church I want you to encourage your family and friends to consider if not coming maybe watching us first and um, and then maybe coming and joining us at some point but I, I think that today for me as much as is any of the benefits or one is the is the one that's probably the most vital um, I'm going to ask us all again to put on our thinking caps. We're going to be talking a lot about that in the coming months. I want everybody to put on your thinking caps. The church must once again claim the high ground of understanding and truth and wisdom. 
The enemy knows that if he can, if he can call us antiquated and all those kind of things in our thinking that he can put great doubt in, in the society we live in. And he's done that to a large extent the last 100, 150 years. We've got to reclaim that, not, not just because we want to be on the winning side. We are on the winning side, but because the truth that we espouse is the truth. And if a people are going to be great and unified and all those things, we must reclaim that truth for the society we live in. Because without that, friends, there will always be doubts. And all the other good things we get to do as a result of their faith, we don't get to do. They won't trust us to do those things, friends. So reclaiming that truth, putting back on your thinking caps. In Jesus' name, Paul is very clearly says that, that to, in, his, in his opinion, to live as Christ, to live in this life is to live for Christ, to die is gain. It's better to leave this world and go to the next. The rest of the world wants to go to heaven, but they don't want to die. They want, to, they want to experience heaven without having to experience death. But friends, in Jesus, we know that's not the way, that's not the way it happens. We, 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 might not, we might not glorify and enjoy the dying part, but death itself is nothing to be afraid of. And it is a necessary step to get to heaven. Too often we try to create heaven here on this fallen, messed up world. Again, demonstrating over and over that we don't think we don't no truth. There is no heaven in this life except those moments of intimacy with Christ, perhaps, when we begin to get a glimpse of it, friends, in worship, in his word, and in prayer. We're going to talk about a lot of those today. We are the thinkingest of all peoples. Let's put on our thinking caps, friends, and notice that Jesus himself, Jesus himself handled every situation and reality. We must embrace every reality we live in wholeheartedly, friends, because we, the church, are the ones who've been given power and authority to deal with any situation in this life, no matter what throws us. What the world is not, what the world is not good at is dealing with difficulty. The world is not good at that. I've been a part of that. We either run from it, we, we, we consume things, we drink, do drugs, whatever. We, we avoid it at all costs. We avoid all truth, all situations at all costs because they're too big for us and we know. We're going to learn today, friends, that proper prayer, putting us in proper perspective with God, motivating the God of heaven because of that prayer, because of our obedience, reorients us to that truth and puts us back in that perspective that brings about the power to effect real change in this world. And that's the prayer that Nehemiah prays today. So we don't run from the truth. We don't avoid the difficulties. We don't avoid the sorrow, friends. We embrace them. We, we hit them head on. Again, Romans 8, 28. All things happen for the good of those who love God. That means your best day, your worst day, if you do it correctly, it ultimately happens for your good and for God's glory. There is a, there is a victory through every situation. And we don't have to point fingers at the other person and say how bad they are because of the situation. It always amazes to me how quickly in modern America, when you turn on the news or whatever, how quickly people are willing to dismiss and insult other people made in the image of God. But that's what we do today. And we know less than 1% of the truth there is to know. But we're really good at that. And the winning team is the one who has the loudest horn on that day. That's the winning team, or we at least think that's the winning. Friends, does that seem like victory or good or right? Does that seem like truth playing out? It does not. Put on your thinking caps. When Jesus saw Lazarus dead in the tomb, he didn't run from it. He didn't say, yay, I'm going to resurrect him. This is a great moment. He was going to resurrect him. It was going to be a great moment, but Jesus, the shortest verse in the Bible, Jesus wept. Before that, he snorted in anger because he knew the moment was terrible and he hated it. He lamented the moment. It caused him to weep even before the miracle came. Today, we're gonna learn to do the same. So turn with me to Nehemiah chapter one, be page 473 in your pew, 471 in your pew Bible, Nehemiah chapter one, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, right? Kind of the middle of your Bible, turn it back about that much. Begin the chapter one and continue on down through the rest of the chapter. Nehemiah chapter one, verse one. Nehemiah chapter one, verse one. Today, 
for usual blood. And Nehemiah, uh, the, the Israel's in disrepair because of the banishment after the Babylonian Empire came in because of Israel's sin, just as God has promised. Judah had sinned, and because of their sin, God had them exiled by King Nebuchadnezzar and the Babylonians. Now the Medo-Persians are in charge. And Nehemiah, who's one of the highest officials in, in Artaxerxes, Darius' kingdom, um, hears about the goings on in Jerusalem, and he is grieved by it. Let us listen as God speaks to us. To us. The words of Nehemiah, son of Hakaliah, in the month of Kislev in the 20th year, while I was in the citadel of Susa, Hanani, one of my brothers, came from Judah and some other men, and I questioned them about the Jewish remnant that survived the exile and also about Jerusalem. And they said to me, those who survived the exile and are back in province are in great trouble and disgrace. The wall of Jerusalem is broken down, its gates have burned with fire. Friends, the very foundations of the city of God and the people of God had been knocked down. They were in great distress and in great disgrace. When I heard these things, I sat down and I wept. For some days I mourned and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. So the very first thing he did upon recognizing the news, the way that we deal with the realities around us, friends, is first we must learn to sit down and mourn for the realities around us, friends. If we're so busy insulting each other and thinking badly of each other and being angry and going into our little corners and, and bawling up, if we're so busy doing that, we can't possibly accomplish the first step. The first step is to mourn the reality we live in, friends. Friends, church, we live in the same reality today. The foundations of truth have crumbled and been burned, and we've allowed it. And we are justly receiving what we get for that, for cheap and easy church, allowing a lie to perpetuate throughout the country we live in. And the first thing we must do is mourn and weep before the Lord and pray and fast. And put God, he said, before the God of heaven, put God in his proper place and be humble before him. That way, again, we are, have proper perspective for God to be moved and for us to see and understand. And then I said, oh, Lord, God of heaven, the great and awesome God, that's who he is, friends. He is the great and awesome God, oh, our Father in heaven. We honor you this morning. Indeed, you are the great and awesome God who keeps his covenant of love with those who love and obey his commands. Let your ear be attentive and your eyes open to hear the prayer your servant is praying before you today, day and night for your servants, the people of Israel. Let your ear be attentive. Brothers, when you turn on the news, when you listen to watching, do you think God is listening to us? To our cries? Does it look like God is in a helping mode right now? It's time to weep, pray, fast. I confess the sins we Israelites, including myself, confession must come in my father's house and committed against you. We have acted very wickedly towards you. We have not obeyed the commands, decrees, and laws you gave your servants Moses. Does it look like America obeys the commands of God? No, we don't. We do the opposite. Remember the instructions you gave to your servant Moses saying, if you are unfaithful. So he reminds us, friends, that there, there's been the deal has been struck. We, we currently live under a covenant with God. There, there's a covenant relationship that is in effect in the world right now. And God makes it very clear, made it very clear. If you do this, you will be blessed. If you stop doing that and instead do these things, a curse will come upon you. And that will always be consistently true. Over here, you'll know the truth. People will be united. There'll be a, there'll be a single banner in which, of love and goodness and truth that we can all come under and live under. That will happen over here. Over here, people will think they're smarter than God and have 330 million little opinions and people pointing fingers and being mad and, and difficult and sickness and bad economy. All these things will happen on this side. Remember the instruction you gave your servant Moses saying, if you're unfaithful, I will scatter you among the nations. God keeps his promises. But if you return to me and obey my commands, then even your exiled people from the farthest horizon, I will gather them from there and bring them to the place that I have chosen as a dwelling for my name. There's still possibility. We can still be saved, friends. 
They are your servants and your people whom you have redeemed by your great strength and your mighty hand. O oh Lord, let your ear be attentive in your, to, to the prayer of this your servant and the prayer of your servants who delight in the reverence of your name. Give to your servants success today by granting them favor in the presence of this man. I was the cupbearer to the king. Our gracious heavenly father, thank you for this, the reading of your word. Our Lord, I pray this morning that you would speak through me, that we would hear you. We ask it all in Jesus' precious name we pray, amen. Our modern reality, friends, is the result of wanting a kingdom and all that comes with that without a king. 330 million little kings and queens running around with our little opinions based upon less than 1% of that set of the total information which forms and shapes our history, our eternity, our reality. No wonder we can't agree on much. And we wonder why we're so divided and angry, so confused. Yet we constantly expose ourselves, what we really believe, what we really need. If we pay attention, if you put on your thinking caps, if you read and understand the word of God, if you're prayed up, if God is in proper perspective with your life, friends, if you are hearing his voice speak, if you understand the truth, you always see that we constantly, especially in our country, are constantly exposing ourselves. We want God, we want eternity, we want more, we want to worship something, and we worship a lot of different things, and they always disappoint us, whether we realize we're worshiping them or not. Again, take a moment, be honest, put on your thinking caps, and consider what it is you truly worship. I was watching a late night show recently, actually I was watching a YouTube clip of it, I was watching a clip on some eschatology, and then... Um, I don't remember, but anyway, I came across a clip uh, from a late night host, it doesn't matter, an actress, doesn't matter who she was, discussing her experience in hell and celebrating it. Apparently, she went with a group down to some faraway jungle, it doesn't matter where it was, and they started chanting and doing all kinds of ritualistic stuff, taking drugs that, enhance, let's say, enhance the mind, and the, apparently the demonic presence was everywhere and she, had, in her mind, had this genuine vision of hell. Telling how awful it was, how it felt like an eternity in one second. That's what heaven and hell are. You, there's no time. You will feel like you're there for eternity, even there, even there just for a moment. That's the reality of what heaven and hell will feel like and will seem like. So she probably did have a vision. She probably did have a genuine experience and talked about how with all, even with all the vomiting that happened and all the being broken down and all the pain she experienced that they all came together as one. Friends, there's a whole lot of falseness out. A whole lot, a lot of stuff like this trying to fill our eternally minded hearts and our minds and, and make them full full of stuff that ain't, that ain't meant to be there. And I didn't realize that's not good English. I, I ain't caring. <laughs> And then the audience clapped and applauded. Hey, that's interesting. That's good. We are so desperate, friends, for an eternal experience, for a God experience, that we will settle for so much less. And friends, it only happens when you sit down in the Word of God and open it up and you begin to pray the way that Nehemiah, our brother, prays today. We're not going to experience heaven this side of this 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 on this side of here, maybe again, but we can begin to experience what it's like in doing the things that we're talking about today and the things that Nehemiah described. We must cease being merely an intellectual church, although we must become the intellect. We must be the church, the active church that takes the truth, that thinks higher thoughts, that really works out these ideas and things the way that, the way that we have many times in the past when the church was the brothers and sisters, the educational wing of society. And to reclaim that status, brothers and sisters, instead of just being a ho-hum church. And even more importantly, we must graduate. Now listen to this. We must, America, but I'm really speaking to the church here because we, we get sucked up in the same thing if we're not careful. We must, more importantly, graduate from middle school labeling of each other. Again, with a bumper sticker and an idea that you made up over the weekend reading a paperback, talking about that other group of people like they're Nazis. You ever notice that on both sides, call, everybody, call the people on the other side Nazis? You ever notice that politically speaking? If you're on that side, they're Nazis. You're on that side, they're Nazis. You ever notice how easily we use that term? Do you know what the Nazis did? Exactly. And did awful, awful things. I mean, beyond awful. 
but yet we are just so quick to dismiss it. Why? Because we don't put on our thinking caps because we haven't found the truth. And we know by ourselves there is no solution. Don't we know that deep down? By ourselves there is no solution that's playing itself out every day? And we come back to the word of God. And Nehemiah shows us the way, brothers and sisters. Our brother Nehemiah shows us the way to make change, to affect change, to have authority in this world, to really begin to fix things. It all happens through the spirit of God. God is the, is the catalyst of all the fixing, but we are the instrument through which it can happen, friends, but it won't happen. We have power to, to, to motivate. Brother, God makes it very clear. If you do these things, we'll be blessed. If you don't do these things, we'll be worse. When they go bad, first you just come and you just, you recognize, you go, oh my gosh, Father, we have messed up. Things are terrible. Look, look at what's happening to these children. Look at what's happening to this group over here. It is horrible, Father. And we, we, are, we are the culprits and, you, and we must have that time when we don't run from it. We can't run from it. We have to embrace the truth and weep and pray and fast before the living God. And it's only through that, friends, that any kind of real change is going to be affected. It's the only way. If we're really serious, this is where it begins. O Lord of heaven, verse five, the great and awesome God who keeps his covenant, God will keep his promises, friends, if we do our part. Are we too far gone? Are we just to hold on to Jesus until this whole thing burns to the ground? Well, according to this word, we're not. I told you last week, and I still believe with all my heart, because we're going to do these things that we're about to enter into the best time. I think most of us were realizing in our lifetime. I hope so. We're about to enter into the best time in history when the church becomes the most prominent that it ever has been, even, even more prominent in the early church time. I very much believe that's true. And we'll talk about that in the fall. Do we want to be a part of that? You want to be a part of that? I do. It begins here. We own it. We lament it. Prayer is vital because it puts us in agreement with God, brothers and sisters. It puts us in correct relationship with reality. It, it, and it opens up the very powers of God to move on us. The real topic on, on Nehemiah 1 is how a human being living in a fallen and dying world in a falling and dying state of rebellion develops a level of fortitude beyond our natural abilities. Have you ever noticed how brave and amazing Christian people were in the Bible? Have you ever really paid attention to that? How Paul gets bit by a snake and goes, oh, no big deal. It's just a poisonous snake that kills everybody else. You ever notice that? You ever notice how the early church people, the early church fathers, we talked about, uh, what's the guy's name? I'll talk about, oh, John, sorry, Toe. John said, I was pointing to Toe. You know Toe. Um, John's disciple, we talked about him last week. Anyway, whatever his name was, I can't believe I can't remember that name. Who? Polycarp. Yeah, who said Polycarp? What? What, what? Good job. Okay. You're going to heaven first. Ticket one, ticket two. You ever, you ever thought about that? Only Christians do that. They gladly, uh, Origen couldn't wait to go die in the arena for God. He couldn't wait to go do it. His mother had to hide his clothes because he didn't want to go naked. That'd be embarrassing, you know? Sorry for the visual. But, that, I mean, he didn't want to, go, didn't want to do that. But they could, they were so different. That's a reality, it's a possibility in this world. But first we must do the humility, do the formula, follow God's rules, listen to what God says. He knows. That's the real topic of Nehemiah chapter one. In modern America, especially in the modern American church, it's become supremely icky to discuss how to live with sadness. We avoid it at all costs. So we have no time and space for it. And in truth, this life's difficulties are an ongoing reality and it all ends in aging and death, friends. Why are we so unwilling to own the one greatest constant in the world and that is grief and difficulty? Why are we so unwilling to own it when Jesus so clearly has defeated it for us and says you will defeat it as well? Why, why do we run from ickiness, friends? I don't know about you, friends, but I learned a lot broken down on my bedroom bathroom floor. I've learned a lot staring at the ceiling and talking to walls. Yes, that's an Amos Lee song, for those of you who know who that is. I've learned a lot in those moments. When I've embraced those moments and worked through them, I've become, I've learned a lot about myself. I've learned a lot about who God really is and learned a lot how to deal with it in the future, became a much more prosperous and prominent person through those experiences, especially if I did it correctly. 
running from them, pretending like they don't exist, or pointing at other people and making it their fault. That's all from the enemy, friends. And those other people on the other side of the aisle, friends, are all people made in the image of God just like you and me. And God desperately wants them to come to faith. One of the greatest defining separ separating characteristics of Christianity is how we refuse to run from or deny the difficulties and sadness. We must once again discover our God-given ability and calling to be victorious in all situations. That's exactly what Nehemiah is doing. He's praying, he's humbling himself, he's fasting, he's reminding God, and we remind God of his love. Father, you are so loving. You don't want this to happen. And he is, and he does it. When we actively in faith take what's in our hearts before the Holy Spirit begin, brothers and sisters, begin to pray and fast, the Holy Spirit begins to move. When we walk around like we're above discouragement, despair, we pretend to float around all day, every day, like we're on cloud nine, we're living quite outside the witness of Scripture and truth and anything that's going to affect any real change. But God has given us the ability, goodness gracious, I'm out of time again. i got to get back to doing sermons right again. Nehemiah shows us the way, friends. There's so much more here to talk about. The people in Jerusalem are in a bad way. The foundations are crumbling. They're in great trouble and great disgrace. Everybody around them hates them. They don't want them there. And because of one man's humbling prayer and fasting before God, reminding God of his word and his love and his truth, things were affected immediately and amazingly for God's people. Friends, we got them right where we want them. What's that old story from the Korean War? The, uh, the Marines, went, went, they were doing all kinds of good stuff, and some of the, uh, the Chinese and some of the communist Koreans who were there had them all surrounded, wanted to kill this entire regiment. Everybody was scared. But the general said, no, fellas, no, they can't go anywhere now. We got them right where we want them. That should be our attitude. Friends, today, right now, we are blessed to live in the time because we got them right where we want them. While the world says, no, David, you can't go kill King, uh, you can't go kill Goliath. He's so big. David said, no, he's so big, I can't miss him. <laughs> Friends, you won't be, you, we can walk out the door right now and throw a rock and hit a center. They're everywhere. But first, we got to become something different. People who are desperately in need. They're everywhere, friends. And God has privileged us in this time. If anybody doesn't have a pod, raise your hand. Captain Bill will be there pretty soon. He's flying down the aisle, cape in hand. Here he comes, hands raised today. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Bill. Don't know what I'd do without that guy. I put him in the wheel is what I did. I put him in the wheel. <laughs> Mr. Bill's in the wheel. Those of you who haven't been here before, Clear plastic on the top, peels back first to get to the wafer. Then the Chick-fil-A tab peels back to get to the juice. That's how this works today. <laughs> Friends, if Jesus isn't your savior, this table isn't for you. You'll only be bringing judgment upon yourself. Don't do that today. Come talk to me afterwards. Mike and Carletta will be available in the room over here after the service today for anyone who needs prayer, needs to discuss. Through this door is right here. They will be available. And we will get you saved up where you can come to this table. Jesus, we're told, could not wait to celebrate this table with his disciples. He can't wait to celebrate that with you and with me today, friends. What a blessing. What a gift. Intimacy with Jesus. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank and we praise you for the gift of this table. Clearly, our eyes see our noses smell, our, our fingers feel, our mouths taste the, the gift. You speak to our senses a higher spiritual reality. You stoop to us, Father, this, so that we can see and understand by faith this higher spiritual reality. Jesus, we honor you, our amazing Savior, all your suffering, all that you went through for us so that we could come today and be saved and be nourished by the body broken and the blood shed. Indeed, we know that this isn't your real body, this isn't your physically your real blood, but spiritually speaking, you are present all the same, and the benefits are, are the true all the same for us who partake in faith. So what is true for our mouths and our stomachs, our senses are even more true for us spiritually today. Thank you, Jesus. We ask it in thy precious name. Amen. The Lord Jesus, 
on the night he was betrayed, took the bread. And after he had prayed, he broke it, saying, this is my body for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, Jesus took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank and we praise you for the gift that we have in Jesus, our Savior, our hope, our joy, our peace. Teach us as we come together as a church to be powerful in prayer, to pray correctly, to pray according to your will and your glory, being glorified among us today. We ask it in Jesus' name. You know, I love what Jeff was saying there in his sermon about how as we pray, our hearts become aligned with the heart of God and how uh, through that, that his will becomes our will. And then we begin to see the world through God's perspective and not our own perspective. And that's an awesome thing. Um, we're going to close today with a song called Do It Again. And I love this, the, the, just the, the message of this song is that you know, I'm, I'm one who believes that the time of judges has probably never end. We go through these, these mountains and valleys, situations all through life. And we come to this point in, in life where we say, God, we don't need you, we're good. And then uh, God takes his blessing away, lets us do it on our own. We fall down into this valley. And then we turn around and say, God, we need you again. And um, you know, so when we, when we look at that, we can say, you know, how do we know that God's going to bless us? How do we know that God's going to, to either, either one, he's going to return, or we can say, Lord, we've seen you do it before. Yes. So we believe you're going to do it again. Yes. So let's stand together and close today with do it again.
transcends all understanding. Guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus, our Lord, both now and evermore. Amen. God bless everybody. Have a good week. Come see Mike and Corletta.